And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today, oxygen production. We have 16.3 tons of algae just lying about the place, but that will run out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to build an oxygen production facility up here. I was going to build it lower down so we'd have it nice and close to everyone. But uh, there's like an anti-entropy nullifier up here. That thing can be used to produce some chill to ch cool down our oxygen. Maybe not straight away. We're probably going to hold out in that for a little bit. But that should be a long-term goal to hook that up. Well, reasonably mid-term, let's say. I'm thinking we can squeeze it in right here, and we're going to do a Hydra design. Yeah, this one's going to get weird. Since we are so far from our base, we're going to stockpile a little bit of resources nearby to make this a little bit faster. Now, I know it doesn't seem like we're that far away. At late game, we wouldn't be. Our dupes would move a lot faster. But right now, everyone's athletics is, well, horrendous. So since everyone's athletics are horrendous, it just makes it easier to move everything here first. Then we can start piling in the, on the actual construction. Right, we've got our... What is... Are you singing? Yes, they are singing. What is that trait? Uh, that is Yodler. The dupe can belt out catchy tunes when they are overjoyed. Does that actually help people? Fletcher, you getting uh, any boost from that? Or stop being asleep. Oh, this duplicate works at a higher tempo now since they have been serenaded. Okay, then. I have no idea what that actually does to a duplicate. Um, serenaded plus five. Oh my god, their construction skill goes up by plus five when they get serenaded. That's actually pretty big. Machinery goes up by plus five. Athletics, untouched. Science, untouched. Cuisine, untouched. Medicine, untouched. Uh, strength, plus five. Creativity, zero. Agriculture, zero. So basically, strength, machinery, and construction all get a plus five. Hmm. That would probably be something good to have on a machinist. Anyway, uh, I am currently researching liquid valves. We want to meter in just a small amount of liquid here. We are going to be flooding this area. And by flooding it with a very small amount of liquid. And for that, we're going to need to get a pump down here and get that pump to pump the polluted water up there. That should be fairly handy, though. While we're waiting for that liquid meter to be finished in terms of research and... Oh, skinny. Taking a nap already. I'll try putting in the bottom layers. This is going to be an interesting design. I've uh, never actually built this before in anywhere outside of Sandbox, so let's hope we can get it together without causing too many problems. What we want to do right here is put down two kilos of water. Uh, the reason we want the two kilos of water is we want that water to overpressurize this electrolyzer, or, well, no, stop it from overpressurizing would probably be more accurate. So we're going to dump two kilos of water down there, and as far as I'm aware, it has to be a pretty reasonable close, pretty reasonably close to 2 kg. so we're gonna hook that up there. That is gonna start pumping. Come on, come on. And then it's gonna let two kilos out the other side. Well, once the game finishes loading, and then we're gonna use the disconnect tool. Yeah, I did that wrong, didn't I? Seriously? I've got that backwards, don't I? No, building intake, building output. Ah. There we go. Uh, so we got two kilos. Uh, that is not two kilos. There is ten kilos in some of those. In that case, come here. Oh, you can't, you can't actually drag select whole areas. Pity. Nice. Okay, we can get rid of that one. We don't want it. And then instead, you can be switched off for now. We now have three packets of two kilos just sitting right there, ready to be hooked up when the time comes. We don't need them just yet. And then we're also going to need some water, just clean water to do this. And I want to have them all ready to go so we can do them one after the other really in real quick succession. And uh, you can get hooked up, actually. Actually, that's enough of that. We only need like 10 kilos anyway. Well, 20 kilos will be fine. Ugh, actually, no, I don't even want 20 kilos. You know what? 10 kilos. 10 kilos is plenty. Okay, then. In fact, yeah, you can get dumped in there. I love that the snip tools is now part of the game. It just makes this so much easier. Oh, you need to be hooked up. And same thing again. We've got this set to two kilos and we're going to make ourselves a bunch of packets. Oh, oh. no, that's hooked up. Oh, it's a work errand. No one's actually changed that. Oh, come on. Seriously? What are you doing? Let me guess. Napping. Narco naps? Yeah, narco naps. Hey, there we go. Two kilos, two kilos, two kilos. Perfect. Then, break it up. Oh, break it up. We don't need all of them, but I'm going to be paranoid just in case I mess this up. So, you can go there. 
what we want to do is put two kilos of polluted water right here. Once those two kilos are down, we want to put two kilos of clean water on top of it. Hmm. And I think this should work. If it doesn't, well, I'll have to try something else. Uh, okay, and then we'll put the clean water right after it. Boom. I might want to leave a tiny gap between the two just to make sure the polluted water has time to splash out. And then if we look here, go under liquids. Yes, bottom is covered in polluted water. Then we hook up that. And now the top is covered in clean water. Problem solved. Now the way this trick works is when this electrolyzer starts up, it will try and produce its gases there. This is the actual active tile. There's four tiles there, and this one in the top left is where it produces the hydrogen and the oxygen. And then, since there's already liquid there, they get displaced. They can either go, well, up here, 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 or here. There's like, basically, these tiles are the radius of where it can shoot out. And it turns out it's pretty predictable which direction it'll go. So, we're going to use that. More on that in a bit. But that gets us one of these down. Then all we have to do, oh, one second, yeah, all we have to do is do the second one. We're going to be placing a second one on top of this. This is going to be a bit of a weird design. I made a tiny mistake. I, I forgot to put in the uh, the pipe. Without a pipe, we can't feed water into that, but it's, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, and I should also put in the automation while I'm here. God, I really am rusty. You forget all the little things. All right, we're going to put in that there, give us some automation wire. That's going to go to there, and we're actually going to have a second electrolyzer just above it. So two electrolyzers, one automation shut off. Stop sleeping on the job, Grumpy Bear. <laughs> that is so frustrating. Okay, I think we've finally got the second electrolyzer up and running. There was some minor complications in the background just getting everything sorted. We've even swept it up. It's all nice and clean. And now we can start on getting the second one done, which should be... Yeah, there you go. Seriously? As someone missed a pipe segment. Come on! Seriously? There's just one pipe segment missing. Who, who wants to get around to that? Anyone? Yay! Okay. That means polluted water goes up. We'll have clean water reasonably close behind it. And that will start to fill in there. Now you can go there. Boom. Polluted water is down. Let's check the overlays. Yep. And then clean water should go right on top of that. Perfect! Now the whole thing's submerged. Trust me, this all sort of makes sense later, but it, mm, it it's hard to explain this thing. Once it's functioning, it'll make sense. It's just trying to explain it beforehand. Uh, I'm not sure I can. I don't have the capacity. And we are going to need more. Are we going to need more metal? Stop. Stop. Get out of there. Yeah, you're not getting that one by me. I've, I've seen too many dupes trap themselves. you got to keep a close, close eye on them when you're doing stuff like this. And I think we're just, well, we're not ready to start, but I think we've got enough to be getting started. All right. Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to get some power going in here. We want power going in here so that we can start vacuuming the place out. Uh, to vacuum the place out, if the pressure is below 20 kilos, I want you to stay always on. And that will turn on that gas pump, and that gas pump will start vacuuming out this area. Uh, these gas pumps are also going to have to turn on as well. You, you're set to 9060, that's perfect. And to make things more fun, what we did was we're going to actually use the automation from this battery to power those generators. So those generators are going to fill up, and then on the power network, they're going to dump power into this whole grid, which will turn on the gas pumps and all that stuff. Ah, oh, didn't hook this up today. There we go. So great, they're going to keep powering that. Now when the battery here hits full, the automation wire will kick in and boom. And we can hook it up to the hydrogen generators in a bit, but not just yet. And oh my god, I'm an idiot, I haven't been... Mm. One second. You see, we have to clear all the gases out of here, and I've unfortunately hooked this up to our hydrogen generators. But, uh, we can still fix this without even breaking in. We can just build the pipes like that. They should be able to build that pipe from the outside. That we can run down here to this thing. And once it's in there, I think we actually need an output pipe, huh? pipe on that. That will allow us to vacuum out all the oxygen. In fact, we'll put it in the second tank. We're probably going to have to take out all the gases out of there. It's going to take a while. But at the same time, we can snip that. And then, yeah, it'll slowly vacuum that whole place out. Now, this entire area down here and all the way up here on top is the same thing. So it's going to take a long time to get that oxygen out of the bottom. This is a side effect of the design I chose. This area in here is actually separate. It's sealed off with... Well, basically all of this stuff. 
Oh my god, this much carbon dioxide. Yeah, none of that'll matter. We'll we'll be vacuuming out all of this, but that will come second. This one is the more important one because what's well, the bigger one? Alright, come on you guys. Hurry that along. Once that's in place, and okay, that's my bad. We'll check down a second one as well. This might take a while. Oh my god, we're already down to like we're down to milligrams down there, up there, but uh, we're still at grams down here. So it's gonna take ages for that gas to slowly leak up through there. We'll probably be about ten cycles. And considering that the battery is already at 32 degrees, I think I might want to replace that battery and uh, disconnect that one. If we leave that there, I'm pretty sure that by the end, yeah, our entire network will be shot to hell. Or that battery will melt. So we'll copy your settings, we'll paste them onto there, we'll hook this thing up to the grid as well. There you go. Oh. Actually, wait. We, we won't hook you up to the grid. I gotta drain the battery down below first. Yeah, you need to be set to something less problematic. There you go. Then once you're completely drained, we'll disconnect you from the grid. I think we can manage that. Give us a second. Perfect. Now you are no longer generating heat, and as such, we can disconnect you from everything. Uh, you are no longer connected. You, we will connect back up again, and... Batteries coming online. Yeah, everything's sorted. Perfect. This is what I get for being a silly goose. This is the first time making this for real, and yeah, there's definitely a few things I could have learned from doing this. Ugh. You know what? Doesn't matter. You, you can go back to 9060, and you can hopefully get vacuumed out in a reasonable time frame. In fact, we'll probably vacuum out these while we're at it. E the oxygen pressure, though, might be a little bit high. We're going to need more gas tanks, aren't we? So why are we going to all of this incredible effort to make this thing when we could have just made a Rodriguez or something along those lines? Or a half Rodriguez, or even like the little four block high one. Um, well, this one's actually kind of interesting in that it abuses a bunch of mechanics to do something that should seem simple, but... Uh, wait, let me try and explain. This is going to produce hydrogen and oxygen. So long as we have oxygen on this side, that the tile here that produces it will force all the oxygen up here and to the right, and it'll end up in this airflow tile and pressurize this area. And all the hydrogen that gets produced will should get pushed over this side. We're going to put a bit of hydrogen in here. But the huge benefit is, since there's a kilo of water pressure on there, this thing can never overpressurize. It overpressurizes at, I think, about 1.8 or 2 kilos, something like that. But it can't because it's constantly covered in water, which means you can just... Keep these on for as long as you want and overpressurize areas with masses of oxygen or hydrogen. You don't have to worry about it ever backing up. Of course, you do have to keep feeding the beast. But it does seem like an interesting approach. This does mean we're going to have to capture some of that hydrogen and pump it in there. And we're going to have to... Ooh, yeah, we need to get all of the non-oxygen out of here. We need to get out the polluted oxygen and the carbon dioxide. But we can't vacuum it. We have to leave some oxygen in there. So... Please turn on. And once they get, once they, damn it, I never hooked it up today. Right, you can go in there. Once the carbon dioxide and the polluted oxygen are gone, we're going to turn this off. Come on, you can grab it. There's only 780 grams of that stuff left. Yep, polluted oxygen's gone. That just leaves the CO2. Damn it. Yeah, the CO2's down at the bottom, because of course it is. Uh, we'll let you all go. Perfect. Now you can go there. That should turn on the bottom one. Yep. And there goes the carbon dioxide. Perfect. So that's one side done. The other side, unfortunately, is going to take so much longer. My bad. While this ever so slowly vacuums out, we are going to go ahead and acquire some of this hydrogen. I'm thinking a quick gas pump up there, and then we can hopefully secure all of that. Hmm. We just want hydrogen, though, so we might want to put in a quick coal generator down here to power... Oh, damn it. We're going to be traveling a long distance, aren't we? How about we just put the coal generators up here and save ourselves a bunch of time? In fact, I think we can break these two areas together. I've been leaving them separate for now, but... Barring that one piece of slime, which is going to be very... Actually, this place is overpressurized. That slime can't off-gas. Let's dig up that slime now, put it away, and then we can level this whole area out and put ourselves our power generators here. That will drastically shorten the distances we have to go. Uh, someone want to get around to that? Come on. Yeah, you got nothing else to be doing. You can sort this out. While Grumpy takes care of that, we do have some printables available, and... I'm liking the look at that care package, which is Citrus Spandex. I wonder who's going to end up with that one. Uh, depends. Whoever does the next stupid thing, they get to wear it. Which, you know, we'll find out, I suppose, in a few minutes. We are not even going to use coal to power this. We're going to use a little manual generator. I can't remember the last time I used a manual generator on a remote setting. I'm normally all about the coal generators. But it's just a little bit tight in here, so... Hmm, actually, I could just delete those storage bins. That would probably be 
a smarter plan. Oh, oh. We have a wiener. That's it. Excellent. Uh, Uzo. Where did we put those clothing? I think we have to actually find the jumpsuit and assign it out to them. Ah, yes. Here we go. Perfect. Hey, Uzo. Go grab your new clothing. I'm sure you will look magnificent. Yep. Yep. You looked exactly like I thought you would. Mmm. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right, let's get this finished. I want to get some hydrogen at least backed up in this pipe so we can dump it into this section. I'm thinking we can probably start moving that in almost now. The gas pressure down here is so low that if we turned off that gas pump and put in like a kilo of hydrogen, it would crush all the other gases down to the bottom. So, hmm. I'd almost like to be doubly sure before we start, but never mind. Uh, for now. Refinement. We're going to need... We're The polluted water is the closest, so we're going to take the polluted water from down here, sieve it, and first... We're going to rotate it. We can rotate this sucker. Yeah, I think it'd be a little bit more convenient that way. In in one, out the other. Snip those off. And we're still going to have to power it as well. But uh, we'll figure that out when the time comes. Well, this has to be one of the dumbest setups I've done. Uh, the hydrogen will come down here. It's going to get filtered through this section. Why is it not moving any further? Oh. Yeah, we haven't actually put up... A you know what, we'll put in a quick gas bridge right there, and that way the gas can move forward past that point. Oop, I might want to snip that before it gets much further. Yeah, there's good. There's plenty good. I think we are just about ready to go. We have plenty of hydrogen queued up in this line. We have most of the... most of the gases are gone here. There's some carbon dioxide left, but honestly, there's such a minuscule amount that we should be able to force all of it into a single tile if we dump in just even a scooch of hydrogen. And we're going to dump in more than a scooch. We're going to dump in a lot more than a scooch. Uh, first thing, though, is turn off the gas pump. We want to wait until all of these pipes clear. We want it all out of there. Now that that's clear, we can make a few judicious cuts. Right there. Right there. Boom. Uh, you are set to, if it's above 20 kilos. Actually, no, if it's above 2 kilos. Perfect. Uh, then we want to hook this sucker up. Actually, make it above 20 kilos, just in case. I want to make sure all the hydrogen flows in there. Done, done, and done. Ah! Yeah, someone needs to run on that, don't they? All right, we'll enable that building. We'll disable the power up there. We don't need any more gas than this, I don't believe. In fact, we may have more than enough with this, but I want to make sure all the hydrogen is out of the system. And in here... Oof. Come on, float down. Float down. I want you all the way at the bottom. Excellent. Just so long as it's away from the hydrogen pump. I don't want any of that carbon dioxide going past this point. If it gets past this point, we're going to start having problems. So forcing it all the way down. I Now, I could have waited until we had all of the carbon dioxide gone, but I'm impatient. And there's nothing like introducing just a tiny potential source of failure to just stress test your designs properly. And yeah, there comes the last of the hydrogen. Seriously, how is it not pressurizing that any more than it already is? Like, there is milligrams down there. And there's grams on the other side, and they're not compressing that down into one tile. That makes no sense. Uh, let us uh, let me clean up the last of the piping, and I think we're just about ready to sh set this up. Oh, liquid reservoir is almost full of water too. We can start the deconstruction of all that junk, and now what we can do is hook that up there, hook that up there. Don't need the rest of that. The clean water starts to flow. That's going to come in here. Now, what happens is these should get their water, and the moment they do, they're going to start spitting out hydrogen and oxygen, and since there's oxygen already on this side, the oxygen will immediately teleport from there to there, and since there's hydrogen on this side, the hydrogen will teleport from there to there. And, yeah, nothing to look at. It, it, it's just pushing more oxygen and hydrogen to either side. But here's the, the, the awesome things about these, and also the exploitive things. Let's see, the pressure has gone above three kilos. Still going up. Won't stop, either. This will keep going up and up and up, as high as you want. You can literally overpressurize the bejesus out of anything you want. Same with the hydrogen. That's going to keep going up, too. For now, I've got this running on power from the externally, but we'll start pumping that hydrogen in a bit, and that will flow around here and down into both of the hydrogen generators. Now you may be wondering, why is there a hydrogen generator on top and one on the bottom? Why not just put them both on the same level? And it's so that the whole thing would fit in between four tile rooms. This is actually a three-story installed building, and it fits perfectly in there. Um, otherwise, it was all lopsided, where you had hydrogen generators strapped to each other, and it was just... It just didn't look right. So I wanted to have at least a rectangular design. Square or rectangular is my preferred designs, okay? So 
I saw the other ones out there and I'm like, no, they're not square or rectangular enough. I needed something more rectangular. And despite the awkwardness of it, this looks, uh, well, okay, no, it doesn't look great. I probably spent, should have spent a couple more days refining down the design, but that is what it is. It's a casual playthrough. Yeah, so it's just a casual design. Kind of reflects it in the sloppiness, but it works. Probably. I haven't stress tested it for 500 cycles like I normally would, but whatever. One thing we also have to take care of, just to make it neat, I could just run these gas pipes down here, but I want to get this water out of the way. I want to extend this tunnel up a bit. I suppose we could do a minor chicane here. We probably should with all the narcoleptics dropping everything, so... No, no, this water. This water needs to get out of here. And to get that water out of there, we need to get it down to this water tank. So I am going to expand this water tank right now so that we have a bit more space. Yeah, to about there. Perfect. And perfect. Then once that's open, we can actually drop that down as well. Please tell me you've got some more fun clothing for us. Ugh, hatchling eggs. No, wait. No, no narcoleptics. And... Damn it, we've got more eggs i got to put away. And we've got a smooth hatchling egg. Exit. I think we're going to phase out all the hatches and replace them all with smooth hatches and stone hatches. Why not? I've never really used the smooth hatches before, and casual playthrough and all, we might as well see if we can do our metal refinement that way. I think we'll feed them gold. They will make... Like, I can't imagine the heavy metal poisoning our dupes get will be very fun from all the gold they eat, but it might be a thing. Well, I was thinking, if we're going to fill the water tank with that water, that'd be really hard. It would actually be easier to get this water, which is actually also hard, but it would be even easier to get this water, which is actually not as easy as getting this water. So I say we get this water... And then we flow that water down to that water, and then we flow that water down to the hole that one's in, and then we flow that one over to there, and then we'll have all of them in one place. Um, don't worry, it might make sense. Uh, it makes sense in my head somewhere, I'm sure. All right, so we drill down here, we dig this out, and... Oh my god, what are you doing down there? Okay, mushrooms. Uh, we'll dig this all out. Uh, we should probably extend this on just a little bit more. I mean, if you're going to do a water tank, do a proper water tank. Done. 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 Now do this quickly because we do remember we are running out of oxygen here, or well, algae, and we would like to get that oxygen production facility we have made up and running. Right now it's overpressurized to 20 kilos. I've set it to turn off. Once it hits 20 kilos, we don't want to overpressurize it. You know what? Let's let it go a little bit more. I mean, we can go up to like 50 kilos or so. That gives us some more hydrogen to work with as well. That means we can rip out those coal generators when the time comes. Hey. What, what are you doing? Oh. Yeah, I don't think that hatch is going to evolve in time. Or, well, evolve in time enough for us. Okay, give me a few sandstone tiles as well. I want the bottom of the tank to be actually flat. Not that it's absolutely necessary, but I would prefer things that way. What the hell happened to our calories? Um, I've started removing some of the, the meal wood, but I think I should probably remove an entire row. Um, Actually, you can go as well. Once that last ba once that bottom batch is harvested, I'm going to get rid of it. I don't think we need it anymore. Oh, and uh, yeah, we're going to run all of the water out of there in here, and that should fill up the tank a bit. Uh, do we have granite? I would prefer to use granite for the tiles. I don't think it matters anymore. It used to be water pressure would push through thin t or weaker tiles, but I don't think that's been a thing for a long, long time. At some point, patch, they changed it all. So, part one. Part one... We crack open this area, and this water flows down here. Part one complete. That was pretty easy, actually. Uh, you can go as well. I probably should have removed that pitcher pump already, but yeah, it's fine. It can just sit there as a reminder for a while. Nope, this place can become a massage room if we stick a plant in there. For part two, we're going to dig in there. Uh, actually, hmm. let's just keep it nice and breezy. Dig in there and across, and that should let all the water out of that section, which will flow down here, which will then flow down here. Oh, you get to sleep by a waterfall. Isn't that nice? Actually, let's, uh, let's give Grumpy some clothing to go with that. Uh, let's see. You can get a basic orange shirt. Uh, gloves will just have to leave the same. You can get, oh god, more orange, seriously? And you either get basic bubblegum shoes or basic purple shoes. What is the difference? I can't tell. Um, go with bubblegum, I suppose. And go with basic black pants. In fact, basic black pants are the default. So yes, there you go. Perfect. Anyway, uh, with that dug out, our next step will be this blob of water up there. Which I'm thinking we can just go like this. Uh, oof. This should be fairly handy. We'll just dig across here. 
The water will flow down here, and then it'll flow down here. Are we going to need a bigger... Please tell me we don't need a bigger water tank. We've got two pockets to go. Oh yeah, we'll see how much this one fills it up, but we might need to extend the water tank just a tiny scooch further, and... Nope, that sand needs to go. Okay, down one, down two. Perfect. And then we need to get that into there, which shouldn't be too hard. We can just level that out. And we can let gravity do the rest from somewhere around... Ooh, here-ish? Yeah. One second. Yeah, this could work. This can work. Now, this is, of course, the hottest water. This is 47 degree water. All the rest of this is 22, 23, so it'll probably drive the, the temperature in here by, like, 4 or 5 degrees. But I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem for us. Done. Like, oh, don't be napping right there. How are you still breathing? You're underwater. Muppets. <laughs> oh, and you will put a sandstone tile right there. Uh, just to stop any backflow. Actually, we might want to dig this down. I would prefer to have two tiles of depth, if at all possible. Just to make sure the water doesn't actually flow back over the edge. That would be kind of awkward. Yeah, there we go. Uh, make that priority nines. No! Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. I don't even know where that's going. Oh, actually, never mind. It's not that bad. Quick, 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 quick. Oh, much better. They can still get out. It'll just be a long walk. Where, where are you going? Picked up the algae. Yep, yeah, fine. All right, that gets rid of all of the water across the map and drains it all into one central tank. I think that was totally therapeutic and totally worth the effort. Now, hmm. Oh yes, oxygen. Oxygen, that's it. We're going to run the oxygen pipes across here, and then we can run them straight down through the center of the base, instead of having to chicane around that water tank. The whole reason- oh, undigging pacifist and practice nope. The whole reason we moved all of this stuff was so that we could put the oxygen pipes through here, instead of having to do them through here. I know it's only a small difference, but, you know, neatness sake. A few quick snips later, and we're down. Uh, I'm just putting in the- Standard issue pipes. Now, they've definitely sorted out gas flow an awful lot. It used to be you put gas through pipes and it would be wonky which direction it went, which is why we have all of these gas bridges put in. But I kind of stick with that. I like the method of knowing exactly where the gas goes and be able to control the flow. And if I want to force gas somewhere, I can. So this is just my preferred method of doing it. That's why we have these things coming off the back end of the bridges. This means all the oxygen will be forced down to the end first, and then if the end is full of gas pressure, it will keep backing up further and further and further until it eventually gets to the top of the map. If I need any high priority events somewhere, I can just break off a bridge of this stuff. And you can go there. Wow, they are getting a lot faster at all that construction. Once that last one goes in, I can hook this up. Now, at the moment, I've got some insulated tiles there, but... Oof, there we go. That will keep pumping until the pressure goes below 20 kilos. Or, uh, actually make that 10 kilos. If the pre air gas pressure is above 10 kilos, then you can pump. Otherwise, we're going to let these things go. These things are going to pump it until it's 20 kilos of pressure. We're currently very high on the pressure list. All right, that starts the gas flowing. At the same time, though, we need to disconnect this. We don't want these coal generators take, pumping so much. So uh, we got the gas all set up. All we have to do is turn on the gas pump. Uh, Power-wise, power sucks up to everything except the battery. Grand. Automation-wise. Yep, that was the last thing. Now, the wires are already there. All we got to do is connect them. And then we sever that from the top section. Done. And the final thing, sever the power. Uh, yeah, that can go. In fact, you can get rid of... Mm. Just need to think about it. I don't want to actually sever the power just yet. We can keep that as an emergency backup. Done. Oh, yeah, I should probably get the hydrogen gas pump pumping first. So this guy is going to pump if the pressure is above 2 kgs. It's above 2 kgs, which it definitely is. You will start pumping hydrogen. There we go. Exit. Hydrogen comes down here, feeds into both the generators. And the generators are hooked up to this guy, so once the battery there hits 90%, that hydrogen generator should switch off. Done. System should back up now with hydrogen, and we have four kilos of pressure up there, six down there. So all that happens is this is basically a self-powered oxygen maker, but just overpressurized. That's it. It's an overpressurized, I think it's called a soggy so sopom or 
Uh, some people call it a hydra. Some people call it a soggy uh, self-powered auction maker. Whatever you want to call it yourself. We'll see how well it holds up. If you have any problems, then we can always just rip it out and replace it with something else. And oxygen pressure-wise, we are done. In that case, we can disable these. I'll probably deconstruct them in a bit, but for now, we'll disable them in case anything goes horrifically wrong. And... Oh, one more. And that takes all the pressure off our grid. And I flooded the mushrooms. How did I flood the mushrooms? Um... How much liquid is in there? A thousand kilos. Yeah, oh, that's when that overflowed. Yeah, right. Okay, so... Fine. We fixed it. We fixed it. The mushrooms weren't affected. We've still got our food flowing in, and we've even cut back on the mealwood. I think one last thing to do before we can say this is mostly done. This won't be fully done until we can, uh, well... I want a vacuum seal between that heavy watt joint plate and the rest of this place. This is going to go up to about 70 degrees in here. So, to vacuum seal it, I... Uh, there's ways to do it, but I prefer to wait until we just get the uh, the plastic and get ourselves those mini gas pumps. So what I want to do in the meantime is deconstruct all of this stuff, and then what we're going to do is move the water sieve and the water tank up there. Reason being... Oh, actually, we can start severing these now. You can be severed there. Perfect. We'll move all the water tank, and we're also going to move the water sieve up there, just because it's nice and neat and keeps all things in one spot, and I want them all powered off this one grid. We want this completely separate from this coal grid down here, for when I inevitably forget about it and disconnect it, because I'm like, oh, nothing uses that anymore because we've switched over to geothermal or hydro or god knows what. Well, first thing we're going to do... Water. Yes, you need to go up there. We're going to empty out this water tank. Uh, we can get rid of this whole section down here. Now all the wolf water filtration will be powered by this one power transformer, which is fed off of the oxygen production grid. That will provide the power to the water sieve, and it will also provide the power to the liquid pump. And that's it. It should be its entire own self-sufficient grid. Well, once we drain the water out of this tank, which will take... 5,000 seconds. Okay, um... Actually, no, 500 seconds. A cycle. No time at all. While that tank is ever so glacially draining, what we're going to do down here is throw in some of these cycle sensors. And... Yoink. What am I doing? That's not an automation wire. Uh, automation wire. There we go. A little bit of automation to turn those off. Um... Hmm. This guy here I might want to turn off permanently, just for now, because I'm about to run a power cable through there. Now, we're just going to turn these on for a small percentage of the day. Activation time... Oh, second. Actually, wait, wait. I'm going to leave that till the next episode, because I'm almost out of time. Uh, we're going to... We're going to automate those, hook them up to the power grid, and then we're going to have to set them so their schedule aligns with uh, this crowd down here. And I'm thinking as well we should add in some... Where are they? Ah, Sweetles. Why not? We can throw in some Sweetles as well for a little bit of, uh, well, having a little bit of everything. We want a smorgasbord for, the, for these little duplicates to be eating. Also, we've got to get a few other crops going on as well. After snipping, clipping, and doing all the necessary stuff, we've now got this sorted. Polluted water gets pumped up from the bottom of the map using power from this... Oh, did I disconnect that somehow? Oh, I forgot to hook up the power. There we go. That is the final step. Now that that is done, all the water gets pumped from the bottom of the map. All the water gets filtered up here, gets fed into that. And this thing down here, or sorry, this thing down here is the only thing that requires manual labor. So long as the water sieve is topped up. For now. We really do have to get around to getting us some automation in play. In fact, yeah, we are good enough. We've got two points so we can go for, Skinny can go straight into mechatronics engineering next episode. Anyway, that is a hydra. Ooh, let's check. Hmm. I think we're going to have to get it. I, I don't want to go with too big a team. I kind of want to keep it a little bit personal, so maybe cap out at 15, 20 dupes. But then again, I do want to build stuff really fast. You know, we'll take the, the curative tablets for now. Anyway, that is, well, my take on the soggy soap self-powered oxygen maker. I don't think it's going to win any awards, but uh, at least it's rectangular. That's uh, that's the only thing it's got going for it. And how did you make a mess? Mmm. God damn it, Skinny. If, if I had any clothes left over, you know you'd be wearing them right now. That is, yep. Yep, let's go and straight into our clean water supply. Uh, emergency. Emergency. Uh, no, actually, it got caught by a blob of water I forgot to mop up. Oh, that is actually good to know. There you go. And done. Now, do you two want to go, like, go grab a nap or something? You guys must be horrible. You know what? We'll deal with that next episode. Anyway, I'm gonna cut that out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.